guys and thank you so much for joining me if you are new to my channel I'm Kat and I like to talk about true crime conspiracies and all sorts of related things today's case is an extremely weird case but before we get into it just a quick disclaimer I don't mean to be disrespectful to anyone I talk about in the video this is for educational and entertainment purposes only all the information I give you in this video is already found in the public domain. Thank you so much. On this case in particular, there's barely any information out there, very few news articles and very, very little media coverage. Most of the information in this video, it's been sourced from Facebook and websleuths.com apart from a couple of news articles so as you can understand, there's no way to verify this information. I don't know how reliable or how accurate it is. Mark Randall Fullerton, 35 years old, was last seen leaving his girlfriend's home in Bragadocio, Missouri in Pemiscot County on Wednesday 3rd of June 2020. At the time his girlfriend said he left the house after an argument walking barefoot, wearing black shorts and without his truck keys, phone or wallet. Mark Fullerton is currently listed as a missing person in Pemiscot County as police are still actively working the case. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Mark Fullerton, you are asked to contact the Pemiscot County Sheriff's Department at 573-333-4101 or your local police department the MSHP Missing Persons Clearing House at 866-362-6422. And now let's dive right in. Pemiscot County Sheriff Tommy Greenwell said extensive searches were conducted by deputies, local police and public volunteers in the weekend the 14th and 15th of June 2020, but they found no signs of Mark. Investigators interviewed numerous people who had contact with Mark in the days before he went missing. They also seized several items from the house he was last known to be in, which I assume is his girlfriend's house. According to a missing persons poster, Mark Fullerton was last seen wearing only black shorts. He has skull ring tattoos and a full length skull on both arms and recently had all of his teeth pulled out. Mark is described as 5 feet 11 inches tall, 150 pounds with brown hair and blue eyes. Mark has skull sleeves on both arms, Kate on the left side of the chest, Aiden on the right side of the chest, Mark on the stomach, a scar on the right hand knuckles. He has full dentures but was not wearing them when he went missing. Mark wasn't heard from or seen since June the 2nd by his mother. Before his disappearance he would always speak to his mom daily, always, always. According to the girlfriend she last saw Mark leaving her house on June the 3rd. The girlfriend didn't tell Mark's mother until the following day, Wednesday, June the 3rd, in the afternoon, that he disappeared. Now, if you think about it, uh, you know, if she knew that uh, Mark's mom would uh, call him daily or they would have a conversation or he would check in with her every day, then the last time his mom talked to him was on, on June the 2nd, then it would make sense that if something happened and the girlfriend is involved in a way, it would make sense that she would uh, she would uh, report Mark missing on June the 3rd because obviously his mom would wait for his call or for them to have a conversation to, to check in and she would grow worried. So yeah, it does make sense. Mark left behind all of his personal belongings, hat, wallet, teeth, dentures, necklace, rings, shirt, truck, shoes, everything, everything. Mark had a cross necklace that he never removed. This was found broken on the floor of his girlfriend's residence. The sheriff's department was called and they were at the location until 3 a.m. on Thursday, June the 4th, taking statements and searching for Mark. 
They were told by his girlfriend that he walked out of the front door while she was in the bathroom and he just disappeared. She also said he left in only a pair of black shorts. His belongings were left behind. Mark previously said to his family that he and his girlfriend were not getting along, that he was unhappy and was going to leave the relationship before his disappearance. <laughs> I am honestly, I am starting to paint a pretty good picture here. Mark is an only child to his parents and he is also a dad of two boys. I am guessing that the names on his tattoos are of the boys. He also has a lot of friends who are looking for answers, of course, as his family is. The last person known to see him is his girlfriend, well, according to her accounts, on 3rd of June 2020 at her house in Bragadocio, just two hours before dark, according to her statement. We also know his wallet, phone, shoes, truck and keys were still in her house. She says that he vanished while she was in the bathroom throwing up. Okay, so, question. Who leaves the house half naked just before it gets dark, barefoot, with no wallet, no phone, no car keys, no dentures, nothing. Who does that? And why would you even do that? Not to mention, the thing that stands out the most to me is the necklace which he would never remove. This same necklace was found broken on the floor of his girlfriend's house. This to me is the most telling. It's definitely an unmistakable sign of a struggle, in my opinion. And to live with nothing at all, no belongings, no money. No, 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 you don't do that. You don't do that when you leave someone for good, you don't. Nope, nope, no, nope, no, nope. something, something smells fishy here. And I'll tell you, I think that the girlfriend definitely knows more than she's saying. It's blatantly obvious here. The only way I could see Mark just leave is if he was high on something but obviously we don't have this information so i can't really say anything we don't we don't uh, there is nothing public out there that he was ever a drug user so you know i'm just putting this out there but this is just about the only possibility i see of mark leaving half naked with absolutely nothing the following information is taken from Where is Mark Fullerton Facebook page. Let's get a little insight into Mark's girlfriend. The following post or message is her talking about a fight she had with her son several years ago. Quote, Honestly, I wish my gun had just went off when he was hitting me with it. Then I started having seizures and he was pouring buckets of water in my face. I haven't had a reason to leave since I lost Laken Girl. I lost everything, but I didn't think I would lose my husband and son too. And I know Laken would not have wanted me to live like I have for seven years now. I have no one at all. Until Landon goes to long-term rehab and the mental hospital, I will not talk to him. I didn't call the police and I think I laid here 27 hours before Paul Wayne could get here. That's why I have to get away from here. I am moving in the next week, but I'll keep you posted on, Sean. End of quote. So Mark's girlfriend is saying that she wished her gun had gone off on her son. So imagine what she would like to do to someone that was living with her and she just found out he was talking to his ex and telling his ex he was leaving Ashley on Friday, Ashley the girlfriend. So, according to what I just said, Ashley was Mark's girlfriend, right? She finds out, she finds out Mark is talking to his ex about leaving Ashley. Ashley already lost a husband, so now she's about to lose a boyfriend too and she knows that he will leave her on June the 4th, Friday 2020, he was, going to, he was going to a hotel just to get away from her. But he didn't make it to Friday. 
He was reported missing on June the 3rd, just a day earlier. I think it's possible that she did something to him on Wednesday after she found out he is planning to leave her and she didn't tell his mom he was missing until on Thursday, which gave her a substantial amount of time to clean up and get rid of him. And the reason why I think that she told his mom uh, on Thursday was, like I mentioned previously, because he, Mark and his mom would check in with each other on a daily basis. So Mark checked in with uh, his mom on the 2nd when she last heard from him and then it would be a bit strange and suspicious for his mom not to talk to Mark the next day. So that's why Ashley didn't really have a choice but to report him as missing. Jimmy Mosley is a handyman that works for the family on the farm and he was in some kind of a relationship with Ashley before Mark came into the picture. He doesn't own a house, he's a drifter, basically sleeping, you know, wherever he can find a place. Both of Jimmy's vehicles were parked on Ashley's driveway and this note was found in Jimmy's truck right after Mark went missing. Quote, do not say or talk in this house or around phones. End of quote. Is this Ashley's doing? She's, uh, w is she warning Jimmy not to say anything about what happened because the police might check the phones? Or what is this? This is so weird. Is Ashley paranoid? Is it her handwriting? Did she think that her house was bugged because there were lots of people in and out of her house right after Mark went missing. The deputies, the highway patrol allegedly didn't rope off the house or tell anyone that they couldn't go in the house. So they didn't exactly treat the house as a crime scene. Even more weird is that Jimmy's truck was sold immediately after Mark went missing. He also got rid of his phone and he disappeared for two weeks to Arkansas with a girl named Joni. Apparently, the spot that he likes to go to in Arkansas has never been searched by the police. Allegedly, someone witnessed Jimmy and Joni dumping carpet into a burn pile and burning it. The note left in Jimmy Mosley's truck could be a huge piece of the puzzle. It also seems that there was a bullet hole in the wall right behind Mark's pillow. When the search dog handler discovered it, she brought it to the deputy's attention. The deputy said they were aware of the bullet hole and Ashley, the girlfriend, told them that her and Mark were playing around with her gun and then he went off. There was also another story said about the same gun by a friend of hers, maybe Jimmy is not exactly clear who, but a male friend anyway. According to him, she handed him her gun and he didn't know it was loaded and it went off accidentally. These stories, they seem to me like, like someone is explaining them, like they would be talking about a toy here. Not about a real gun, which is dangerous, uh, you know, loaded, unloaded. This is not the point. The point is that you, you don't make up a story and talk about a real gun like it would be a toy, because this is what it seems to me. To me, it seems that this story is made up and is made up in such a childish way as if people wouldn't know or realize that a real gun is really, really dangerous and you just don't go playing around with it, not knowing if it's loaded or unloaded. What? That doesn't make any sense. The scene, Ashley's house, was not processed even with all of this information and the house wasn't roped off to be investigated. This is the last photo of Mark before he went missing with Ashley. I don't know, but if you look at the photo, she looks so devious. She gives me kind of a creepy vibe, don't you think? The following photos are of some items that were found by civilians and they called the police to check them out. The police took some items and apparently they sent them to a crime lab in Cape G, but they were not interested in the rest of the items. It's not exactly clear or um, known which items were taken and which items were left behind. 
There were several bags taken out of Ashley's house the day she finally said Mark was missing, 24 hours later. There were some sheets with stains of blood found outside and <laughs> according to Ashley's statement, these stains were from, from her being on her period. Also, there were some towels found in her washer. In her, uh, Actually, I want to clarify what I just pointed with the bloodied sheets. Um, it's not clear if the sheets were found outside or in Ashley's house. However, there were bloodied sheets and uh, according to Ashley's statement, she says that there was blood on those sheets because she was on her period. Okay. There was also a knife found that was turned in and also a skull ring and a necklace that no one in the family were able to identify. And these were turned in to the police back in November 2020. The reward poster was burnt up by Mark's girlfriend, Ashley, in her own yard. This was witnessed by a friend of hers. There is also a mattress with apparent bullet holes in it that the police would not take in because they decided that the holes were made by a mouse. By some accounts, it also seems that Mark had two phones. However, the police, they didn't even check to make sure if he indeed had two phones or only one phone. The girlfriend kept one phone and she only turned over one of the phones to the police. Basically, basically guys, this is absolutely everything that I have on Mark Randall Fullerton. So, if everything that I mentioned to you is indeed true, then what I am seeing here, and I want to point out again, this is my opinion. Ashley finds out Mark wants to leave her. And he says it to his ex out of all people. Ashley gets enraged. His mind is made up. He even says he'll stay at the hotel. Ashley clearly sees that he's got a plan and he will go through with it. It's possible they have an argument, maybe she's threatening him with a gun, there's a struggle, his necklace breaks and falls on the floor, Ashley shoots him. Maybe Jimmy is helping her get rid of the body, maybe he owes her, who knows? So the body is dumped where Jimmy disappears to. I think that this makes the most sense. In my opinion, this would be the only rational explanation. I also don't think that the police is taking Mark's disappearance serious enough. That bloody sheet is definitely not period blood. Impossible. That stain there looks like someone bleeding on it from an injury. Those holes in the mattress definitely don't look like mouse holes. The story of Ashley playing with Mark and the gun and the gun went off and that's how there, there are bullet holes in the walls is again an unbelievable story. I, I just don't buy Like I mentioned earlier, it seems like a childish story to be made up. The note on Jimmy's car. Again, seems to me like if indeed she wrote that note and put it in Jimmy's truck, it seems to me that Ashley is panicking. She's paranoid, she's worried about something. And I think that the police is not considering the possibility that Ashley did something to Mark. I think they believe he just left. It's so unfair because you usually only think about the man harming the woman, but not the other way around. It's so sad because a lot of men out there are being abused by women and this is exactly why very rarely they even come forward because people don't believe men as abused. Mostly they, they believe them as abusers. And I think this is exactly what is happening here with the police. If the police saw the messages between Mark and his ex saying he's going to leave Ashley, stay at the hotel and so on, they would most likely believe he just left her. I don't think they will take Mark's disappearance seriously. But the truth is that the way I see it, when you leave someone, you don't just leave at dark with no shoes, only a pair of shorts on, no phone, no rings, no hats, no clothing, no car, no necklace, no wallet, no money, no keys. Where could you go with nothing? No, 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 no. It does not make any sense. Ashley definitely knows more than what she's saying. I believe she is responsible for Mark's disappearance. 
If you have any information on the whereabouts of Mark Fullerton, you are asked to contact the Pemiscott County Sheriff's Department at 573-333-4101 or your local police department or the MSHP Missing Persons Clearing House at 866-362-6600. And thank you so much everyone for watching today's video. I really do apologize that this is not as straightforward as uh, I would normally like uh, my videos to be. Unfortunately, this is everything that I was able to find out about Mark's case. And uh, yes, like I said, there is no way I can verify this information. This is everything that I found on uh, Mark's Facebook page, on webslows.com and on some news articles. So. Sadly, th there's no way this can be verified. Okay, so this case was um, recommended to me by someone on a Facebook group. So guys, if you have any cases that you want me to cover, which you feel like they are not covered in the media, this is what I am aiming at, to cover less covered cases, please do let me know. Either you can uh, put a comment down in the comments below, also, you can uh, send me an email. My email address is in the about section of the YouTube channel. You can also contact me on my Facebook page. My Facebook page is the name of my YouTube channel. So you will be able to easily find me on Facebook as well. I am mostly active on YouTube and Facebook. So if there is any case in particular you want me to cover, which you didn't hear of or you feel like uh, is not really covered, please, please do let me know either way. Thank you so much again for watching and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It, it really helps with the algorithm as uh, the more engagement the video gets, the more uh, YouTube will uh, push it around on the platform and we can um, and more people will be able to see it and be aware of it. Thank you again guys so much for now. Take care and stay safe. Bye.